Well, it's a sad day for baseball as uh, Tom Seaver has passed away. He spent a couple seasons with the White Sox. When you were a rookie, Seaver was on the team. What do you remember about Tom Seaver? Well, you know, I was lucky to grow up with the people I grew up with. You know, Seaver, I think he was one of the top punch, Bainsey. You know, those guys out there, they have a lot of class and play the game right. And uh, Seaver... It's a funny thing because we, we didn't spend that much time together, but we did. I was sitting next to him on the airplane, and we just talked about baseball all day. I was, what, 20, 21 years old. And I, to me, I create a leadership in my brain, uh, the right way to play the game, have fun, but respect the game. And uh, I never forget that. And, I, you know what I mean, we create a pretty good, Relation. It's kind of funny because a kid from Venezuela come up for big league, and all of a sudden this Hall of Fame guy uh, treat treat me the way he did. I think maybe because he don't have a son, he have a couple of daughters. Maybe that's why he treat me the way he did. And the best thing about it was when I, my f first fly out out of Chicago after uh, we got the first road trip, and you know I'm looking for a seat and. He told me, he said, hey, you're sitting here. All right, you got five Hennekens. Heineken beers? Yeah, Heineken beer there. And I see there, like, I feel like the biggest guy with the protection of Tom Seaver, like, okay. And I don't think it was a big mistake, but I go, oh my God, I couldn't even look back to the airplane. And he told me, he said, you're not going to learn anything good back in the airplane. Then you see here next to me, the long I'm here. And I was sitting next to him, and I, and I, I can't even go to the bathroom. When I go to the bathroom, I got to go to the first class. When Tony La Russa and Jean Lina was, you're not, go, you're not allowed to go back there. He, he taught you a tough lesson about the game as well, didn't he? Well, you know, they should do that. And that's why I'm very, I criticize a lot of kids about being, don't respect the game. Or I, I, I might grow up in a different era on baseball. That's why, I don't want to say old school, but uh, one day um, we played in New York against the Yankees. I hit a line drive to right field and they went for making <clears throat> unbelievable play. And now they throw the ball to the stand, they play with the ball before, uh, my, back then they throw the ball back to the mound. I break the ball and I, I grab my glove I think Greg Walker gave me a glove, and I banged the ball from to the mound. Steve looking at me, I don't know, I just make it out. We make three outs, go back to the dugout, and the soon I come up, he grabbed me by my throat. Uh, I was surprised because of what I did. And you think, you think you're that good? You don't think they're going to make plays like, like that in the big league? I'm still like, okay, he take me all the way. I'm talking about, I'm in the air. You can't hurt me, hurt me, Snyder. All the way in Yankee Stadium, all the way in the back, and put, sit me on the table, training table, and he just earned me out. He eat me, he called me every name in the book. The long I'm here, you better than that. You're gonna be a superstar, you're gonna be a great man. You're a baseball, you're a great baseball player. I, I not let that happen. And I said, they're like, I'm, he's talking to me, and I really don't know what, what, what I really did. Finally, he went out, I stayed there, and him said, what you did? I'm like, be honest with you, I don't know. Then Hermie find out what I did, they said, no, he say, when you bank. You bang the baseball, the baseball on the, on the mound. mound uh, that's not professional. That was unrespectful to, to the game. Then I had to fly with him next to me, and I, I was afraid to ask him, now I understand why you did it. And, uh, you know, since that day, I appreciate that. I learned, but I was cocky little guy. Mm -hmm. Think I was better in the game. And, and I think having those conversations with that man every day or every flight, just put it that way, it meant a lot to me. And, and, and it, just, it just made me grow up in baseball. I, I think that, you know, it's, it's easy to talk nice when people pass away. It's not my style. My style is somebody I hate, pass away, say, oh, God, good. <laughs> One less. But this man, I don't think he just was nice with me. He was, oh, another thing. 
that they, they, they was the best. Yeah. We talk in Seaver, you know, Mian, the big shot with the um, coaching staff with the Marlins. Big shot. Mm -hmm. And I always try to tease the guys, you know, the other coaches, and try to be like, ah, oh, you know what I mean, before I come to the White Sox manager. We would play the Mets. We get in dress, early game, day game. The coaches always mm -hmm. give first. Tom Seaver come down all the way from his booth. He told me exactly this. Listen, little man, I never do this to anyone. I don't come down all the way down here to say anyone, but you, what, 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 you know, it worth it. How you guys doing, how your family, how your wife, everybody's doing well, yeah, now, you know, we're talking for like maybe two seconds. I said, remember, I don't do that for everyone. He did it for you, though. And he left. And that's the worst thing Seaver did it to me. Because all the song I told that all the coaches started to go, ha-ha, and I was again, boys. I, you know what I mean. And that always going to be in my mind. You know what I mean? Just, uh, we create a good relation in, uh, in little time. You know, we don't play that much, mm -hmm. you know, that long together. And I remember another thing. One day, Poch and Fisk and Seaver was on the mound talking about pitching. And come up, I come up to the conversation. Yeah. I see Junior and only see me go, Dad, what you was doing? You, you can't understand what they're saying. You can, I said, you know what I was doing there? Learning. Learn what they're going to say, what they talk about. Two Hall of Famers talk about in the same particular time. And, and come back and just like, that guy just want to teach you the right play to play the game. Because Seaver, he not put up with, with no one. Yeah. When you, well, you were a rookie, 85, he wins his 300th game. You were in that game. You want to something funny? We in Sarasota, old Payne Park Stadium, sitting together. So you know what? When you win the 300 games, I'm going to get the game winning RBI. I'm going to make the last, I'm going to make the last out. And I'm going to keep the ball. Well, you said this to him in spring training. In spring training, Sarasota. Sunday, New York. Yes. And I never feel in my life that electric. The soon we pull into the bus, people in New York just waiting for the White Sox bus. Yeah. A lot There's of 52,000 people. people there. But it just everybody watching him, you yeah. know, grew up with a match. Yeah. What I did, I get a base seat to take the lead. And I got the game winning RBI. And you can see when it's a fly ball to left field. Yeah. I went after. Like, I want to catch the ball like an idiot. I remember this. I, remember I went this. after like I want to catch. I went after and I go, I almost went through the warning track. And I think it was Reed Nichols playing left field, catch the yes. ball. And I run back like, oh, my God, so excited. And people ask me, like, where you go all the way? Because I told him I got to get the ball. I'm not going to give it to him. <laughs> and it was a, a, a special moment. You know, when you admire somebody and you got to play punch behind the play, Seaver pitching, 300 games, first time in my life, the opportunity to live that moment at Yankee Stadium. Uh, I think it was my highlight in, in my career because it was a special moment in, in a very short time I was spending in the big league. I had maybe a couple months in the big league, August, I think it was August, maybe a few months in the big league. And it was like, I never celebrate anything so much just to see how people in the United States was doing stuff in the big league level, mm -hmm. family, champagne, interviews, you know, media. I, I never see so many people in, in the clubhouse before in my life. And uh, then finally I told my, uh, that, then I say, well, I did, I play in the big league because that's the first moment I see so many people around the clubhouse just for that moment. He was 40 years old in 85. He threw 145 pitches for a complete game for his 300th. Can you imagine that? It's, it's, it's just unreal. I remember him. You know, how, I, I used to say, hey, old man, how you fast, you know, all the time, how you fast ball. I position myself depending on his fast ball. And say, I got to go one today. Uh, you know what I mean? We know how that. It's got a report it's like got now. Report. So you literally, he, you'd ask him if he had his good fast How's your ball? fastball? Because I know he's going he, he to throw fastball inside. He, I know he's going to be inside. He's going to throw fastball away. I know he's going to be away. He's not going to be missing. And to me, I position myself better. They always told me, he's, one day he pitched, he, can he could have thrown his breaking off for a strike, something in the bullpen, and he threw 
maybe six innings, he threw one breaking ball. And it's funny because Pudge just put the fingers down and he go, no, no, fastball. Finger down, fastball. No, 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 <laughs> fastball. Like, they got the song, I come out, I go, I, I play with the sign, with the kitchen sign, I say, he been throwing fastball all night, why they put three and two and, and change up? It's just because he, he, he pretend the guys, I mean, like, he, he, he tried to check and I go to check your pitch. No, 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 that's why he just fastball high, fastball low. It's amazing, amazing, amazing moment, amazing experience. Yeah. What I, I was behind him. So how do you remember Tom Seaver? A real leader. Uh, he cannot be in baseball around me, more professional, and a guy respect the game the most. He, you know what I mean? That guy respect the game, you know, like hot dogs, you know, like guys don't respect the game, he hate that. Yeah. And very professional, take care of himself very well. Very smart man, very smart man. Oh my God, uh, even to his last days of his life, he got winery back in California, you know, he lived his life right with his family. Uh, I, like I told you earlier, you know, it's just, I was lucky to grow up in that era, you know, with those guys. You know who was at the 300th game as a fan? You, you told me that. I know. Can you believe that? How about how confident, you know, how confident like everything can be? Yeah, because my grandfather asked me if I wanted to go to New York. I was in eighth grade, and he said, and I said, sure, I'd love to go. And we'll go. He said, we'll go see a White Sox game. And as it turned out. We saw two games that weekend, and the second game that was the Seaver 300. Yeah, Saturday. Yeah, and it was Pee Wee. Uh, uh, they got the old timer. Uh, they, they, they retired his number. Phil Rizzuto. There Phil Rizzuto. Rizzuto. That's why Phil Rizzuto. I think the cow hit him, and, 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 and they, they, you know, hit him. Knocked him over, knocked right? Knocked him over the day. Yeah. <laughs> they brought out a cow because it was it was. That's his the holy cow. Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, yeah. So they, he he was knocked over. By the way, uh, Richard Nixon was in the game. Was in the. Stands that day. Oh, okay. Former no. president. Well, before he was president, now he's a bunch of stars and rock and rolls yes. and rappers who go to the games. Before <laughs> it's like the Kennedys and the pro the presidents go there watch the games. Yeah. But it was a great experience. And I think overall, I was like kind of not sad because he asked for the he asked for the trade because he wanted to be close to his family. Yes, right. So in eighty six six he got traded to where did he to go? Boston. To Boston, that's right. That's right. Because he, he wanted to be close to his family. Right. They lived in Massachusetts. In his career, yeah, and, and and that's why I think White Sox being a first class organization, uh they sent him to Boston. Uh, I think we got Psycho, Steel Lion, somebody else. Yeah. But I think the main thing, the main trade was because he wanted to be with his uh, with his kids and his wife.